Okay, we're now going to move on to our first plenary session of this Congress. Now, there's going to be lots of different plenary sessions throughout the three days, um, and they really are a chance, hello, to debate different visions in an almost round table setup up on the stage. So for each time, I'm going to introduce a new chair um, who's going to lead the discussions, um, and we'll also be opening up to the audience. So if you have questions, um, please do contribute towards that. So these plenary sessions are really about hearing real experiences and practices to when it comes to developing smart cities. So let me hand over to um, our chair of the first plenary session, which is called Rethinking Urban Governance, Cities at the Service of Population's Needs. Matteo Hernandez is the Managing Director of Barcelona Global. He's previously been the CEO for Economic Development for the City, where he helped coordinate policies on employment, entrepreneurship and attracting foreign investment. So please give a very warm welcome to Mr. Hernandez. Let me introduce myself. I will be chairing this session. I'm Matteo Hernandez, CEO of Barcelona Global, which is a private platform made up of about 700 members in Barcelona. Uh, fully private, that wants Barcelona not only to be a smart city, but especially to be one of the best cities in the world for talent and economic activity. But my role today is to moderate these fantastic speakers that we have here on the stage uh, on a session that's the first much. plenary session. And, and the, the topic of this session is the relation of government, technology, and people. When smart cities movement began, Everything was related to technology. And we were talking about technology, technology, and technology. And today, six years after this Congress began, today we are talking about how technology serves people, helps people to be happiest, as she will explain us, help people, help cities to be uh, more equal, as people in, in Atlanta will, 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 take, will talk about, help cities to be more friendly, like in Valencia, and then we will have also um, how technology is helping those projects. We have five fantastic speakers from different parts of the world. First, we have um, Aisha Bin, Dr. Aisha Bin Bish, General Director of the Smart Dubai office. She will explain us many things about what's going on there in the Middle East in a fantastic strategy on smart cities. <coughs> and she will surprise you on the concept of what she thinks a smart city is. Then we also have the mayor of Valencia, Juan Ribó. He's been in charge of about two years and changing completely a city from a different model to a new model, much more sustainable and smart. Then we have also another, the chief of staff of the mayor of Atlanta up there, Candence Beard, that coming from the States, and from, coming from a fully different city as the Mediterranean cities are, not a dense city, but a very mm, sprawled city. <laughs> so, and she will talk a lot on, on, on how technology. And then we have two main companies helping those cities to proceed. We have Massimiliano coming from Milano, from SAP, and also Pilar Torres coming from Madrid, from Amazon um, Services. So um, they will speak for about three to four minutes at the beginning to introduce themselves and to introduce their strategy. And then we will begin uh, a dialogue. I will raise the first question, and then you have technology to be used through your smartphones. Um, sup supposedly, there's something here that I will receive <laughs> your questions. So write your questions on I'd your like smartphone, on your table. tablet, and people will be able to vote for those questions. So I will know with which questions you feel are important or relevant or whatever. And so we will we, so ask through that platform. I will take notes of those questions and we'll, we'll raise. And also, if somebody is really willing to show his face, he or she will have the opportunity <laughs> to take a micro and to speak to the, to the, to the people. So without anything else, let's, let's begin with, with Aisha, Dr. Aisha, from Dubai. Yeah. So please. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a delight to be uh, with you today, and I look forward to a great conversation. And thank you, Matthew, for uh, hosting us at yet another specular event uh, this year. Cities, as we know, have evolved over thousands of years, guided and built by human hands, and designed to serve the needs of the people who live in these cities. 
but to help them to be more happier. Hundreds of years of trial, uh, trial and error, innovation and failure, have created the great cities of the world that we know today. Beautiful cities like Barcelona, where you can stroll along uh, a waterfront or sample delicious foods, or lose yourself in the alleys and shops of an old neighborhood. Over centuries, cities, city governments have learned how to regulate, protect, and govern the resources and infrastructure that flow through our cities and make them work. In many ways, the history of cities is the history of human innovation. But with each new wave of innovation, city governments had to race to keep pace. Today, we are in the midst of another wave of innovation, digital innovation. And the, that wave is building and rolling much faster than any change that has come before. Just think about how much has changed for cities between 2011 when this conference was founded, and today, Airbnb, Uber, 4G and 5G cellular networks, Siri, Cortana, Alexa, and blockchain. Mm -hmm. The pace of change has been dizzying, and some, t some cities, sadly, are falling behind. It is the more agile and often more daring governments who are emerging as the leaders in this race, where the end goal, as always, is people happiness. 50 years ago, when man first walked on the moon, my city, Dubai, was building its first generator. Today, Dubai boosts one of the most advanced power and water plants in the world. And we are quickly transitioning to having 25% of our energy come from clean energy resources by 2030 from no paved roads in my father's lifetime. Dubai now has the world's largest autonomous, longest autonomous metro and tram services. And we are uh, well on our way to achieve our goal of making 25% of all trips taken in my city by train, car, bus, or boat autonomous by 2030. In three years' time, we will be launching a satellite probe designed and built in Dubai by Emiratis to travel to Mars. Yes, to travel to Mars to conduct the most comprehensive study of that planet atmosphere that has ever been completed. And in 100 years, we'll be sending manned mission to Mars. This is all happening in Dubai. How does a 46-year-old country do such? We are motivated by conviction that cities exist to promote the well-being of our residents and visitors, and that as city leaders, we must use every tool available to use to promote the happiness of our people. For the cities of the past, those tools were shovels, cranes, and steel. But today, data is our tool, and we are using blockchain, Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence to make Dubai the happiest city on Earth. Tools to design a government blockchain that will make paperwork a thing of the past, and access to world-class blockchain entrepreneurs who can build it. Tools to test and train artificial intelligence solutions in an AI lab, and AI services and systems that will reshape our city for the future. Today, it is no longer enough for governments to sit back and regulate the solutions that others have invented for us. We must take an active role, not only in creating the right enabling environment for innovation to keep place through policy and legislation and industry de uh, de development, but we, we also become innovators ourselves. We have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. At Smart Dubai, we are experimenting, testing, sometimes failing, but continually striving to create the city of the future today. This is, this is what our, uh, our, uh, we are doing in Dubai, and it will be my honor to share with you some of these lessons, and I encourage you to visit us at our stand here in the uh, conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Aisha. So um, keep in mind what she said. 
to build a happier city using technology and smart city, which is a nice concept, making citizens happier and making things easy is good for them to be happier. So from a 46 years old city, now we shift to a much older city. Mm -hmm. Cambiamos a una ciudad mucho más antigua, mucho más Medi muy mediterránea y aquí tenemos el honor de tener al alcalde de, de Valencia, Joan Ribó, que nos hablará en español, por lo tanto aquellos que no lo, no, lo, no lo comprendan utilicen la traducción simultánea. Por favor, señor Ribó. Gracias. Eh, buen día. En primer lugar agradecer la invitación a participar en, en esta sesión del Smart City Expo de Barcelona. Es un honor poder compartir este diálogo con vosotros que desde la empresa, el activismo, la investigación, la formación o la gestión pública trabajáis para mejorar las ciudades que habitamos. Muchos la conoceréis, pero me gustaría presentaros mi ciudad, Valencia, la tercera ciudad española en términos de población, en términos de PIB. Es capital del área metropolitana de 1,6 millones de habitantes y de una comunidad autónoma de 5 millones de habitantes. Valencia tiene una gran vocación tecnológica y es una ciudad que gestiona sus servicios municipales transversalmente de una manera inteligente a través de la estrategia Valencia Ciudad Intelligent. Desde mi punto de vista, lo más importante es el uso de los datos que generan las tecnologías y no las tecnologías en sí. Las Smart Cities son un ingrediente clave en la mejora de las ciudades en nuestro día a día porque la hacen más sostenible, inclusiva, próspera y diversa, pero solo cuando son entendidas como un medio y no como un fin en sí mismo. Así lo entendemos en Valencia, como un enfoque general de políticas urbanas centradas en las personas. La estrategia de Smart City Valencia Ciudad Intelligent pivota sobre la plataforma de Ciudad Inteligente desarrollada junto a Telefónica. La plataforma ha logrado mejorar la gestión de los servicios de la ciudad de Valencia. Asimismo, ha favorecido la obtención de financiación para desarrollar nuestra iniciativa Impulso VLF Valencia en, en la dirección de una ciudad más eficiente y más habitable para la propia ciudadanía y para nuestros habitantes. Esta plataforma dispone de una serie de herramientas para acercar la información de la estrategia y los datos generados a toda la ciudadanía y tomar decisiones de forma eficaz e inteligente. En primer lugar, la app Valencia. Dispone, Valencia dispone de una app móvil de ciudad que nos permite consultar todos los recursos que pueda haber a nuestro alrededor, transporte público, centros sanitarios, aparcamientos, etc., así como interactuar con el ayuntamiento y comunicar incidencias y comentarios sobre los servicios municipales. Portal de datos de ciudades. Este, en este portal se pueden consultar los indicadores de Ciudad de Valencia y compararlos con algunas de las principales ciudades del mundo. Portal de datos abiertos. Desde 2015, el Ayuntamiento pone a disposición de investigadores, empresas o emprendedores de to toda la información de la ciudad para poder generar nuevos estudios y generar también nuevos modelos de negocio. Cuadro de mando de la ciudad. Se ha conseguido a través de este cuadro de mando monitorizar más de 450 indicadores de ciudad y de servicios municipales a disposición de los gestores de nuestra ciudad. Valencia al Minut. Esta página web pone a disposición de la ciudadanía todos aquellos recursos clave de la ciudad en los que dispone de información en tiempo real, así como el pulso de la ciudad a través de las redes sociales. Geoportal. Desde finales de 2016, el Ayuntamiento puso a disposición de toda la ciudadanía el geoportal con el que puede consultar cualquier dato georreferenciado existente en la ciudad de Valencia. Me gustaría darles algunos ejemplos de cómo esta información mejora el día a día de las personas. Telelectura en tiempo real del consumo de agua en todos los hogares y negocios de la ciudad. Monitorización al minuto de la calidad del aire en distintos puntos de la ciudad con un sistema de alertas a la ciudadanía. Control del consumo y del estado del alumbrado público en la ciudad. 
Proyecto piloto en el mercado municipal de Rusafa, instalando 30 medidores que permiten controlar aforos, temperatura, humedad, para facilitar el día a día de vendedores y clientes. Os explicaré todos estos casos si hace falta durante la sesión. Ahora quiero cerrar esta intervención destacando que Valencia tiene una estrategia consolidada basada en la gestión en los datos abiertos y en la gestión inteligente de los servicios municipales de manera vertical pero también transversal. La plataforma Valencia Ciudad Intelligent no solo abre la posibilidad a generar mejoras dentro del ayuntamiento, sino que permite a desarrolladores, investigadores y empresas generar riqueza en un sentido amplio con el aprovechamiento de toda esta información pública e inmediata. Les invito a que visiten nuestra ciudad, una ciudad inteligente de ciudadanos y ciudadanas inteligentes. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Joan Ribó, alcalde de Valencia. Um, un, un elemento importante de su intervención que es esencial para esta mesa es la colaboración público-privada que él ha mencionado. Ha dicho que para hacer todas estas aplicaciones al servicio de los ciudadanos se necesita trabajar codo a codo con las empresas, no en una calidad de proveedor cliente, sino en una alianza como ellos están haciendo con, con Telefónica en Valencia. Este congreso precisamente va de esto. Por lo tanto, que sepan que lo que what's happening here, what she explained from Dubai, what he just explained from Valencia, his collaboration with companies and SAP is present at down there with the stands, so you can have the chance to visit what Telefónica, what SAP, who's not going to speak, is doing um, for, for smart cities. Now is the turn from Massimiliano. He comes from SAP. He just landed from Milano. And in SAP, you know, everybody knows who SAP is. But usually we realize SAP as a company devoted to big companies, big banks, big factories, trying to help them to arrange whatever they do. And now he's going to explain how SAP is helping cities to develop smart cities. So, Massimiliano. Thank you, Matteo. And buenos dias. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Max. No need to learn the full name. Um, I am the global lead for SAP Future Cities team, which means there's a group of experts that know deeply about your daily business your domain, your activities, what you're trying to achieve in terms of growing the economy of the city, improving mobility and transport, managing the environment and resources in a more effective way, governing the internal administration more efficiently and allocating resources, and last but not least, so most importantly, providing services to the people in the city in a different way. That's what we do day in and day out. We apply our 40 years history in terms of investing in technology, in applications, and bring that experience into innovative areas like machine learning or artificial intelligence, blockchain, the Internet of Things, or what we call our Leonardo capabilities. And we work with cities to really enable change. I was thinking yesterday, I had a chance to meet with some colleagues as well as with some customers, and I was asking myself, if we had talked about the future of cities 10 years ago, we would have probably been at a urban planning or architecture conference. But in the past five or six years, the world has been meeting at a technology conference, whether it's information technology or whether it's uh, equipments and autonomous driving and those kind of things. We're meeting at a technology conference because technology is really enabling and triggering change in the way cities collaborate with the ecosystem, in the way they innovate processes like measuring cons consumption of water or measuring the happiness of citizens and figuring out new business models to provide better services. I was talking to a city in Eastern Europe that is tracking the movement of tourists throughout the city and maybe reusing some of that data for economic development to 
help the local businesses and retailers understand the patterns of how citizen and tourists behave throughout the city. And that's what we do, we commit to do, and we're investing as an SAP. Help cities drive value out of technology. It's not technology for the technology's sake, it's driving value out of the strategic element that is the data and the information that the cities have. And so I'm really pleased to be here and have the chance to share the stage with such distinguished speakers, and please visit our booth um, to discuss these topics. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, just mentioning, we were talking some years ago when cities about city planners, and now we are talking about technology. That's 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 a great shift on on the concept. And now let's 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 fly to Atlanta, um, one of cities very friend, uh, close friend from Barcelona, also an Olympic city, plenty of big companies there. And now we have the honor to have the chief of staff of the mayor of Atlanta that he, she will, 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 will introduce what Atlanta is doing. So Ms. Scandans, please, the floor is yours. Thank you and good morning. Bon dia. I am pleased to represent um, our mayor, Mayor Kasim Reed, as well as the city of Atlanta. As Max said, as Matt said, the proud home of the Centennial Olympic Games at this smart city expo in the great city of Barcelona, the heart and host of the city of the 1992 Olympic Games. The city of Atlanta is the cradle of the civil rights movement in America, home to the world's busiest airport and one of the fastest growing technology centers in North America. Thanks to our financial stability, our progressive residents and our strategic business community, we are facing an exciting time of unprecedented growth and change in Atlanta. The metropolitan Atlanta will grow by 50% to 8 million people over the next couple of decades. That means the time is now to shape the future, not with a wish list, wish lists are a waste of time, but with a plan built on sound data and cutting edge technology. At the city of Atlanta, we are executing our vision for the future around the five core values that define us when we're at our best. Equity, progress, ambition, access, and nature. The plan is inspired by our civil rights legacy and steeped in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s philosophy of the beloved community, a society based on justice, equal opportunity, and love of one's fellow human beings. In Atlanta, we know that the most strategic scenario for growth includes everyone. Equity and affordability are our biggest challenges, but technology and data offer the potential for endless solutions. Technology has become a real-time, present-day asset for cities like Atlanta, and everything from transportation to public safety to sustainability and beyond. It complements our employees on the front lines and it helps streamline operations for greater efficiency. It fosters economic growth and provides more opportunities for our residents, our businesses, and their employees. It will make us a more resilient city by giving us greater insight into energy use and solutions for emission reduction. In the end, it will help us ensure and build equity in the city of Atlanta, and that's a vital point. Equity is the most common goal that influences all our public initiatives. It's what makes Atlanta a livable and viable city for anybody who wants to come there and build their dreams. Our city design studio is a place where residents can walk in off the street and talk about the future of Atlanta. What do they want our city to look like? How do they want it to work? What do we develop? What do we protect? How does it all connect? With the input of residents and urban professionals, we are building a vision for what Atlantans want the city of Atlanta to be in the coming generations. The city studio will collect our most creative ideas and back them with strong policy that will help us develop a realistic process for moving forward. Our next steps will include a mobility plan, zoning ordinance changes, cons conservation efforts, and a housing strategy, among other tools and plans. A great design for the future will help Atlanta remain a global center for business. 
It will allow us to continue to attract the best and brightest talent and secure our status as a center for culture and innovation. It will also prioritize inclusive growth and address the challenges of equity so we can ensure that our prosperity remains accessible to everyone. We know that Atlanta is at its best when it's a city for everyone. I look forward to the dialogue and I'm delighted and honored to be here with this esteemed panel. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we will go deeper on, on those issues about affordability, about building prosperity accessible for everyone in, in Atlanta in the panel discussion. But the last speaker we, we have is, is Pilar Torres from Amazon. You all know Amazon, and most of you, I guess, use Amazon to buy things. But um, Pilar will tell us another side of Amazon which is the site of helping smart cities to grow, web services, technology, data, use of data. So, Pilar, please, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Eh, eh, buenos días a todos. Eh, bienvenidos al Smart City Expo. Uh, my name is Pilar Torres. I work at uh, Amazon Web Services. And as Mateo said, many of you know Amazon. And in fact, um, we are approaching a very busy time of the year for Amazon because most of the online shopping will take place between now and Christmas. This is our peak, peak time, and I hope you all um, are part of it uh, somehow. But I'm part of um, a side of Amazon called Web Services that was born almost 12 years ago precisely for that fact that Amazon needs were very, very variable along the year. We had a very stable uh, needs during the year, and then some peaks were the the, the largest part of our demand and our customer interactions took place. And from a technology perspective and from a data management perspective, this was a huge challenge because you had to dimension your infrastructure to the peak and then you waste a lot of money and resources during the year. Or if you dimension your infrastructure for the average, then you're missing the key moments, the make or break of your of your business so in in that challenge amazon developed uh, infrastructure as a service so to be able to accommodate and to scale automatically to the needs of our business and once this service was developed and working for amazon um, we decided it was the time to offer it to the world as a new business called amazon web services which is today used by millions, millions of companies of all sizes across the world. And um, the advantages of using the cloud, because this is what we do, we offer cloud services on a pay-per-use mode, zero upfront commitment, and pay-as-you-go, fits very well in the needs of cities, because cities are so, so dynamic, and they have dynamic needs. And we provide the infrastructure to adapt to these dynamic needs uh, coming from different sources. Mm -hmm. And how we help um, uh, cities all across the world, and many <coughs> of uh, the cities we work with uh, are present today, and, and I will be willing to, to share what we do with them later on in the session, applying the most innovative technologies are in three areas. One, to provide the core technologies, so you have data, you have to collect the data, you have to compute it, you have to analyze it, you have to store it, and you have to make smart decisions based on it. This is the basic cloud infrastructure we provide. But then we develop uh, advanced technologies that we are also using in the Amazon world, and we have a lot of synergies there. For instance, artificial intelligence, Alexa is used and offered as a service for many uh, customers, and many cities are using it now, or IoT technologies, which are used to buy online. We can also use them in the cities, uh, machine learning, deep learning, many, many technologies. And thirdly, the data, because a smart city is all about the data at the service of citizens uh, to make uh, smarter decisions, to make more informed decisions, and to help uh, having better lives. Thank you.
So th thank you, thank you, Pilar, and thank you all five speakers. We have about 29 minutes um, <laughs> for discussion, and so keep using your your smartphones to raise questions. Someday I will receive the tablet to to know those questions. So please, the organization, if if they can, they can bring that tablet here. If not. Send a Maloma, Paloma mensajera. <laughs> um, so just taking what, what, what Pilar said, that we are in an economy of data, and, and data should be collect, um, should be distributed, what um, Juan Ribó just told us, open those data to, to citizens, and should be used to decide. And since we have a, a mayor here, I, I would begin asking Juan Ribó um, how in Valencia he uses those data to decide and how they use those data to help people. Um, so um, how using data, como, no palomas mensajeras. Um, how you use data um, to, to, to take decisions as, a, as, a, as mayor. Bueno, yo creo que hay muchos aspectos. Les comentaría concretamente dos, tres. En el primer lugar, por ejemplo, es la gestión, la gestión del agua. Nosotros tenemos todos los contadores digitalizados. En este caso, para nosotros, la, el control de estos contadores es muy importante. En primer lugar, por un tema que nos interesa a todos en un momento de una profunda sequía y es evitar las fugas que son fácilmente detectables cuando tenemos una gestión de estos contadores. Esa es una aplicación evidente, pero que nos ha permitido, por ejemplo, en Valencia reducir el número de fugas a un porcentaje muy bajo del agua. Yo creo que es un paso importante. Pero hay otras aplicaciones que son posibles y que estamos en estos momentos implementando que es concretamente en Valencia hay muchas personas de más de 65 años que viven solas y su control no es fácil. Una manera de controlar el que pueda haber algún problema es el detectar que en sus contadores del agua no ha habido ningún consumo en una serie de horas y estamos, estamos concretamente en estos momentos planteando una serie de indicadores que nos permitan acceder como sistemas de alarma a estas personas mayores de 65 años. Segundo elemento, que en estos momentos estamos en fase de estudio. Valencia estamos cambiando las líneas de autobús, de la MT concretamente, y nosotros tenemos perfectamente identificadas con, con las tarjetas las entradas en cada una de las paradas, pero no tenemos identificadas, como es lógico, las salidas. Eso se puede ver con, con grandes datos y estamos trabajando concretamente este tema para poder optimizar las, para, las líneas de autobús y las paradas de autobús a ese nivel. El tercero que estamos poniendo en marcha en estos momentos, yo todavía no lo tengo en mi ordenador porque tiene que modernizarse un poquito, es digamos una gestión concreta de los datos del ayuntamiento en el cual se pueda detectar que determinado servicio pues, tiene problemas para invertir o se pueda detectar que de otro servicio puede tener problemas de otro tipo. ¿eh? O sea, yo creo que son tres ejemplos de cómo poder... Pero hay sin duda muchos más y a mí me parece importante mantener la mayoría de los datos, no el 100%, pero sí la inmensa mayoría, porque seguro que si por mi cabeza han pasado tres aplicaciones posibles, por la cabeza de los 800.000 ciudadanos de Valencia pasarán muchas más y mucho más importantes de las que yo pueda imaginar. Fantástico. Muchísimas gracias. So we, we, you, we just saw examples of technology being used to help people as the water service he, he, he just mentioned, and also he mentioned on the use of data on transport. Um, Pilar mentioned the other day when we were talking that Amazon is taking care of Transport of London data. Yeah. And could you share a little bit um, that experience? Yeah, Transport for London um, is um, the tool that most uh, Londoners, but also visiting um, London uh, visitors, use to plan their trips. So Transfer for London is a very, very busy website. Imagine uh, they have 24 million journey plans per day. And uh, this, is, this is a stable workload, day in, day out. But uh, when, for instance, weather events happen unexpectedly, the use um, and the access to the website is, is um, gigantic. Uh, we detected peaks up to 17,000 ac access per second in the case of unexpected snowfalls. So all citizens trying to, to reach out to the web to see what's the best way to, to get back home. So we provide the cloud infrastructure for Transport for London 
to, um, um, to run this website, so to accommodate these uh, peaks uh, of, um, I would say, virtually unlimited uh, workload instantaneously, but also collect and analyze this data. And uh, one, one very interesting thing I want to, to highlight of Transfer for London uh, that also uh, Chicago is doing, who also runs uh, the Open uh, Grid Chicago on AWS, is they are packaging their services as infrastructure and offering it to the public as part of the Amazon Web Services Marketplace. So developers, smart people in the city or in the world can develop solutions that can complement and enrich what the city is doing. And I think part of the beauty is not only providing the infrastructure service to the cloud, uh, to the website, providing the cloud, but enabling the ecosystem where all the talent in the city and across the world can bring more value to the uh, city uh, solutions. Perfect. Th thank you very much. There's, there's a question here for Dr. Aisha about blockchain. How do you, um, is you, how are you using blockchain in this smart city strategy you are hearing in, in Dubai? Yeah, actually, uh, we just launched our uh, blockchain strategy uh, end of 2016, wherein uh, uh, the strategy is built on three pillars, uh, government efficiency, uh, industry creation, and international uh, leadership. Uh, our target is to have our government fully powered by blockchain by 2020, wherein all the sufficient services, government services, will be on top of blockchain. So what we believe is that today with the blockchain, we can reorganize uh, our operation as cities, uh, providing a much securer uh, platform. And that's what we are doing it in Dubai, alhamdulillah. Uh, today, we, we launched uh, our platform wherein all our uh, uh, strategic partners, government entities start to uh, pilot several use cases, such as land department who launched their uh, real estate blockchain network just a few weeks uh, ago, and now all their uh, land registry is happening on top of blockchain. Uh, also, another example for implementing blockchain is implementing uh, uh, settlement and reconciliation between banks, uh, bank accounts on top of blockchain. And today, all the government entities' reconciliation of their bank accounts is happening on top of blockchain. Uh, uh, through our also accelerator uh, programs and uh, Dubai Blockchain Challenge, we have made Dubai into the testing bed of blockchain uh, technologies. Uh, startups across the world, startups from more than 30 countries are flying every day to Dubai. Uh, every week we have an event around blockchain which made Dubai the hub of this uh, new nascent uh, technology. We believe that blockchain will be the new uh, internet of transactions, as they call it, uh, that government can utilize to improve uh, their uh, services and become more efficient. Okay, th thank you. Thank you very much. Max, um, there are some questions for, for you around here. Um, and also, um, we've been told that you have good examples to share with, with, with us on things that you've done in Buenos Aires, um, things that you've done on smart lighting, traffic management. Could you share a little bit on, on, on that? Yeah. Things that people will be able to see in your stand as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So <clears throat> first of all, a lot of the things that we do, and I think uh, Pilar mentioned it as well, is we work with partners. We work with the local city ecosystem and the startups. We enable that ecosystem because that is one of the objectives of the city leaders that, um, that we work with to enable and, and grow the knowledge locally. Um, in Buenos Aires, for instance, um, we work with um, Philips on the smart lighting thing. We work with local partners on uh, storm drain management, and that was actually a big impact, life-saving impact. They implemented sensors on over 30,000 storm drains, and if you've been to Buenos Aires, it's close to Rio de la Plata, so when it rains, there's many areas that are uh, at risk of flooding. Uh, by monitoring the risk of certain storm drain being clogged by waste and debris, the city 
could make practical decision, like uh, ending waste collection for a couple of days to avoid that waste would go into the storm drains, alert certain neighbors of the city to avoid damage. And it, it was pretty dramatic. From one year to the next, it was a couple of dozen lives that were saved because they could prevent the flooding. Um, in terms of traffic, we work with cities like Nanjing. Um, we have examples at our booth in terms of what we call our city digital boardroom. Cities are, and city leaders are able to see traffic patterns, but most importantly, use the insights from all of that data to make decisions like applying or thinking of applying dynamic fares for taxis in certain areas of the cities based on the traffic or dynamic fares to public transport while keeping equality and, and inclusion in mind. So, so those are some of the examples, and I'll be happy to share more if there are more questions. Okay. Th thank you, thank you, Max. And um, if I can add something to that. No, no, you cannot. <laughs> 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 you can hang on this. I, I think this, this illustrates the beauty of the collaboration and the, and the richness of the ecosystem, because the solution that you're mentioning, the Philips uh, City Touch, the infrastructure is AWS. It runs on AWS Cloud, and it's implemented in more than 600 cities worldwide. You mentioned Buenos Aires, Los Angeles, so all across the world. So this is a perfect example. We're bringing different components. You have a ready-to-deploy solution, which is already proved. Pilar, following on, on since you, take, you took the word, um, there's always a question, and it's, it's somewhere also in this tablet, but, but, <laughs> but also always on those, on those. Does a city have to build his own infrastructure on smart cities, or there's an opportunity to build global infrastructures, um, which is, I, I, I know your, your, your answer, but could you share why it's important to share those platforms instead of building your own platform? Yeah, um, well, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there is a factor of um, um, speed and agility that it is, um, very important because the speed and agility allow you to minimize the risk and minimize the cost. And innovation, the successful innovation needs to be cheap. If you have to be the huge infrastructure up front to prove or to implement a new project that you don't know how it will work, if it fails, then you have a big burden that it is very, very difficult to overcome. So we believe that having zero cost up front, the agility and ability to uh, deploy infrastructure as you need and pay for only what you're using is a huge help and a huge enabler of innovation. So this is, this is number one. Secondly, we see the scale because what we're talking is about data. We're talking data uh, coming from sensors, huge amount of data, we are talking data coming from our internal systems. We are talking data um, coming from, from us. People are more and more becoming human sensors in ourselves, providing data to, to the cities, uh, open data, social. So this is a, such a scale that um, you also uh, have to look at the efficiencies and the economies and the security as well. So all these factors combined um, are uh, present um, on cloud. And this is the infrastructure we believe serves best the needs of agility, speed, pace of innovation, uh, scalability, cost of ownership, all also being greener. There are studies that say that um, a cloud infrastructure is 88% uh, more efficient from an energy perspective than on-prem data centers, 90% um, more reliable. There are many, many statistics and data after all the millions of customers that are running on cloud uh, um, nowadays. So um, glad to share with you more details as uh, we progress and later in the booth. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Pilar. Um, Candence from uh, Atlanta. Um, you, you come from a city which you mentioned is a successful city. Yes. Big airport, and Olympic city, big multinationals based there. And, but success in cities, as, as Juan also knows and Barcelona knows, 
creates externalities on affordability, on inequality, on, on those kinds of things. And you mentioned that you as a strategy are focused on equality and as are focused on affordability. Could you tell us how data help on this strategy, how building an affordable city on housing, on transport, on, on, and how to build a more equal city, how are you facing those, those challenges in Atlanta? Well, we find that um, when you have a lot of success, it's, it's wonderful on one side, but it can also be detrimental on the other side, especially with the residents who've lived there for many years and who have basically um, paved the way for the success that Atlanta has uh, been experiencing since the Olympics. We have found and we have attracted um, lots of um, um, headquarters. Um, Atlanta has one of the highest number of Fortune 500 companies uh, in our country. And while we are very excited about that as well as the success of our airport, we do find that those residents are having a challenge keeping up with the pace financially, economically, as well as with transportation. Um, we have a commission called the Atlanta Regional Commission, which provides data to the city of Atlanta in terms of where those pockets of people are. And traditionally, we know where, where those people lie in terms of those people who are able to afford, as well as those people who are unable to afford the successes and um, what's happening with the city of Atlanta. They generally lie below um, our interstate, which pr pretty much dissects the top portion of the city versus the bottom portion of our city. And the bottom portion of our city typically has um, less of an opportunity than the top portion of our city. So we look at the data that um, the Atlanta Regional Commission presents to us and see where we can supplement those um, resources for those economic um, neighborhoods that are being challenged. But we also look at it not just in terms of the financial component, but also transportation and how we can plan smartly with connecting people with transportation, with jobs. We also find that there's a, a disconnect between jobs and between those people um, who are in those areas below um, what we call intersect, inter, Interstate um, 20, which again dissects the city of Atlanta from the nor north portion to the southern portion. Just last year, uh, the city of Atlanta voters um, voted to expand our transit system. Uh, it's a $2.6 billion transportation expansion of our martyr service, which will allow and connect. So our issue is also about um, equity, but it's also about transportation connectivity. And this will allow us to connect people with the jobs so that the disparity economically can be bridged um, between those two sectors. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have many, many questions here. I'm trying to, to mix them up. The most voted question with 20 votes, I think that should be answered by Juan Ribó, that's saying uh, with so many competing priorities that a city may have. What should be city's first priority towards being a smart city? ¿Cuál es la principal, con tantas prioridades que debes tener tú en, en, en tu mesa de, de, de alcalde, um, ¿cuál es la, la, la principal en el sentido de smart cities? Bueno, Respuesta breve. ¿eh? Sí, lo intentaré, lo intentaré. Vamos a ver, yo creo que son muchas. La primera es que la, lo fundamental son las personas y creo que aquellos elementos que definen las personas. Por eso nosotros estamos prestando el máximo de atención a todos aquellos elementos que de alguna manera pueden mejorar la calidad de vida, la calidad de los servicios que afectan directamente a las personas y a los servicios sociales. El segundo elemento, y no, no, no la que más, pero sí el segundo elemento para nosotros es el tema de la movilidad. Nos parece muy importante apostar por una movilidad sostenible. Valencia era una ciudad donde el único dios era el coche privado. Hemos pasado a un diseño nuevo en el cual en la ciudad apostamos por una movilidad sostenible, el caminar, el ir en bicicleta, el transporte público como elemento neurálgico. Y en este momento todas las aplicaciones que estamos desarrollando, cualquier persona en su teléfono móvil puede saber qué, qué autobús coger, cuánto, cuánto tarda en llegar el autobús, qué bicicleta puede coger, dónde lo puede dejar, etcétera, etcétera. 
etcétera, cuáles son, también si utiliza coche privado, en, en la situación, en qué momento está la zona saturadas, etcétera, nos parecen elementos fundamentales. Por lo tanto, insistiendo, el tema de todas las aplicaciones a nivel de servicios sociales y el tema de la movilidad para nosotros serían dos de los elementos prioritarios. Hay muchos más, el tema del alumbrado, el tema, muchísimos más temas, pero yo insistiría en ellos. Perfecto, muchas, muchas gracias. There's a question I, I, I guess for, for Aisha. Um, also got 20 votes and was promoted by Jorge. And they say, how to involve people in smart city? Are citizens users or creators of a smart city? Can you deliver happiness to cities? Mm -hmm. To citizens, sorry. Yes, uh, smart cities are focused on people. It's become very successful stories. Today, what we should promise as uh, smart city leaders is to provide those efficient, seamless, safe, and impactful and happy experience for every uh, resident or a visitor to our cities. For example, in Dubai, we have a city experience lab where people are invited to design with us all these experiences, whether it be uh, an entrepreneur or a mother uh, or even a city uh, planner. To give them these tools, whether it be again a sandbox around uh, sandbox around the blockchain, or to give them some sensor to implement it around their areas and start collecting data, and teach them how to uh, 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 value the data and what to do with these data, uh, to give them tools around uh, analyzing this data and populated uh, populating them in, in dashboards. So. When it's come to happiness, again, also in Dubai, we, ha we launched what we call the happiness agenda, which sit on top of our uh, smart city strategy. We need to discover our people's happiness. And once we discover their needs, because today my happiness is different than your happiness, Matthew, and from uh, uh, the happiness of uh, the people in Atlanta. So once we discover our people needs, and then we go back and sit and change all our, uh, all our policies and systems. And uh, we don't talk about technology, but it's about how, how can we really change our behavior toward fulfilling these needs of our people. And then educate people that happiness is attainable once they understand uh, their needs. And then at the last, or to, to uh, finish this ecosystem, to measure the happiness. To today, uh, in Dubai, we have more than 1,000 uh, 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 touch point in our city to measure people's happiness, wherein people can say how, was, uh, how, how were their uh, experiences in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Um, There's a question direct to Max um, from Marie that got three votes. Um, he, she asks if future cities are discussed at technology conferences, how can people outside technology be part of the discussion? That is a, a, it is a very important question. Um, and the answer is smart cities are enabled by technology but they're not about technology, right? Smart City is about using the technology in a smart way to make life easier for the citizen to access services, to enable the mayor or the city manager to make better decisions. You have a limited budget in many cases. Where do you put your priorities? And by looking at the data, you can Um, do a better job. And by leveraging the capabilities of technology companies, of local academic institutions, of a lot of smart people in the government, it is possible to leverage technology that way. Then if we talk about inclusion in broader terms, technology has made a lot of progress. Um, I work for a technology company that's been there 40 years, and we had a reputation for not being super user-friendly to begin with, but we have invested a lot to make that interface much better, and we have applied that to mobile apps, to websites, and, and so forth and so on. Okay, thank you. We still have about five minutes. If anyone, instead of using <laughs> this tool, wants to raise a question, Please stand up. Um, meanwhile, I will be keeping um, them answering some of the questions you have. Is there anyone willing to show his face, her face? Not? Yes, there's someone there. 
Please say your name and where you come from, and be brief. <laughs> Doesn't it work. Yes, it yes. works. Yeah. Okay, I'm Luis Rodriguez. I'm coming from France. And uh, the question was for the mayor, for Joan. Así que voy a hacerla en español. Eh, Joan, estuve viendo la aplicación App Valencia mientras hablábamos, es lo bueno de la tecnología que es interactiva. Eh, me doy cuenta de que es una forma de pasarela hacia múltiples aplicaciones que hay detrás de diferentes componentes privados, muchos de ellos. La pregunta es, ¿usted tiene una visión clara de cuál tiene que ser el servicio que aporta la municipalidad frontal antes de pasar a actores alternativos más especialistas? Esa es la primera pregunta. Y la segunda, ¿cuál es el presupuesto global de la aplicación Valencia con Telefónica? Empiezo por la segunda, no me acuerdo. Vale. Y por lo tanto no se lo puedo decir en este momento y no tengo aquí concretamente el, el sistema para podérselo decir. La primera sí que lo tenemos claro, nosotros queremos facilitar el máximo de datos ¿eh? en abierto a toda la ciudadanía. Como usted habrá visto en la aplicación, ahí aparece una gran cantidad de datos, yo creo que son los datos más importantes a los que se puede enfrentar cualquier persona que viva en Valencia, que esté en Valencia, que quiera desplazarse por la ciudad, y yo creo que son datos de interacción de múltiples, de múltiples elementos. Eh, comentarle una preocupación, o sea, nosotros sabemos que en Valencia hay muchas personas con, que tienen una brecha digital y que eso no es accesible y que eso nos preocupa, que tenemos que llegar a ella a veces a través de contadores de agua o a través de otros sistemas totalmente indirectos, pero para nosotros es muy importante que la inmensa mayoría de los datos sean accesibles a la ciudadanía y de alguna manera evidentemente también lo son para las empresas y permite, y tenemos experien alguna experiencia en este sentido muy creativa, permite que muchas personas piensen a partir de estos datos en desarrollar aplicaciones más, más modernas, más renovadas, más inteligentes y que en definitiva podamos avanzar. Any last question there? Yes, uh, my name is Rodrigo. I'm coming from Brazil. Uh, we are from Guarulhos. Guarulhos is the largest non-capital city in South America with 1.5 million people. We're starting all our projects for a smart city uh, with the illumination, uh, PPP, what we call, which is a public uh, and private partnership. Uh, it's uh, an investment around 500 million reais, which is something about 150 million euros. Uh, and this is the way we understood it would be good for us to start all the projects for a smart city. So, and then from there, we're going for mobility, we're going for security and so on. So my question go for all of you, uh, even from the public sector and also the private, uh, what's the best way to, uh, to empower citizens through a smart city project without having money. <laughs> it's true. So let me, since we don't have much time, I will ask this question to be answered by Pilar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, definitely uh, each city is, um, is a unique case, and each city has uh, different needs and different uh, circumstances, different environment. But what we see across the world is the most successful smart uh, city initiatives start uh, by what's been mentioned already, which is the people, and having a very clear understanding of what are the most important priorities for that specific city. And then, um, and this helps me also build the, the, my wrap-up message here, is to start with proven best practices. So it's much cheaper uh, to start with solutions that are already off the shelf and are already working, and there are multiple references and have already been proved. Start trying them in a, in a zero upfront uh, investment and uh, then start uh, growing from there, then um, building a big, big project with an uncertain outcome. So that would be my recommendation. Start with your, the unique key priorities for your city and start with um, proven solutions and very, very specific areas.
Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. And uh, so, I'm sorry, inviting sorry, sorry, you sorry, sorry, and sorry, everyone uh, to sorry. invest in our city. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The question was, was, was great to finish this session. I don't know if everyone agrees with what Pilar said. Um, Juan? Sí, yo quería... Sí, yo quería comentar respecto concretamente al tema del alumbrado. Valencia es una capital que hace unos años era prácticamente de las grandes campeonas del mundo en contaminación lumínica. Y hemos iniciado un proceso muy serio de reducción de esta contaminación. Y uno de los elementos en donde tenemos la plataforma Valencia Inteligente es precisamente esto. En este momento, para empezar, porque no hemos terminado, estamos ya monitorizando en tiempo real el estado de los cuadros eléctricos, el estado de las líneas de alimentación. Nos sirve, entre otras cosas, para prevenir posibles robos de material de cobre, metal semiprecioso en estos momentos, el estado de farolas y luminarias y también el consumo de activa y reactiva. Entonces, son elementos que yo creo que nos están ayudando y lo estamos notando en el descenso significativo de los costes de la energía eléctrica. Can I add one thing here, Matthew? Without a leadership and without a proper collaboration between all the city uh, stakeholders, there wouldn't be any smart city. So these are the main fundamental elements for any smart city. Fantastic closing for this session. We are monitorized second by second. We are one minute and a half out of the, of the time. So let's, let's close the session here. Let's give a big applause to the speakers.